Hello, and welcome to another episode of Charmaine's Real Estate Chronicles, the podcast where we unravel the ins and outs of the housing market in the Toronto and surrounding areas to empower you with the knowledge needed for a successful real estate journey. I'm your host, Charmaine Goodridge, and I'm a trusted real estate agent with Royal LePage. Last week, we discussed the offer submission process. Today, let's further explore that topic and consider what steps to take upon moving into your dream house. The first step after finding your dream house is to submit the initial offer. The negotiation process typically begins with the buyer making an initial offer. This offer sets the tone for the entire negotiation. It's important for your agent to do their research and come up with a reasonable offer based on market conditions, comparable sales, and the condition of the property. Making a significantly low offer might risk upsetting the sellers and prematurely halting negotiations. It's important to listen to the advice of your real estate agent who will guide you through this process. This leads to the counter offers. Sellers have three options when deciding about the offer in front of them, either to accept, reject, or counter. If it's the latter, this is where the back and forth negotiation really begins. Counter offers may involve adjustments to the price, closing date, contingencies, or other terms of the sale. Negotiating through counter offers requires patience and good communication between both parties. Price is often the focal point of negotiations. As a buyer, you may aim to negotiate a lower price, while sellers may try to maximize their profit. Emotional factors can also be influenced in the negotiation process. For example, sellers may have sentimental attachment to their home and be reluctant to accept a lower offer, whereas buyers may fall in love with the property and be willing to pay more than they initially planned. Negotiation effectively requires recognizing and managing these emotional factors. Once the negotiations lead to a mutual agreement and the home inspection takes place, if that's part of the agreement, you may request repairs or credits to address any issues discovered. Sellers may negotiate which repairs they are willing to make or offer credits instead. Negotiating repairs and credits requires compromise and may involve additional back and forth between the buyer and seller. Now let's talk about walkaway points. Both buyers and sellers should establish their walkaway points before entering negotiations. This is the point at which they are no longer willing to compromise and are prepared to walk away from the deal. Knowing walkaway points can help both parties negotiate more effectively and avoid making decisions they later regret. The closing date is a date when ownership of the property officially transfers from the seller to the buyer. Negotiating the closing date involves coordinating schedules and may be influenced by factors such as the buyer's financing timeline or the seller's need to move out. Once negotiations are complete and both parties have agreed to the terms, the next step is to finalize the agreement. This typically involves signing a purchase agreement or contract and completing any remaining paperwork required for the sale to close. So now you finally closed the deal on your dream house. Congratulations. Now what? Well, settling into your new space is not just about unpacking boxes. It's about creating a haven where you can truly thrive. Let's start with the basics. First, establishing routines is key to maintaining a sense of order and productivity in your new home. Whether it's setting a regular cleaning schedule, designating specific areas for work and relaxation, or simply establishing a bedtime routine, having a structured daily rhythm can make a world of difference. Next up, let's talk about building a sense of community. Moving to a new neighborhood can be daunting but it's also an opportunity to forge new connections and friendships. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself to your neighbors, attend community events, or join clubs or organizations. Building a strong support network can enrich your life in countless ways and make your new house truly feel like a home. Whether it's adding fresh paint, hanging artwork, or incorporating meaningful decor, 
Infusing your personality into your home can make it a reflection of who you are and bring you joy every time you walk through the door. Keep in mind that settling into your home is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself as you adjust to this new chapter of your life, and don't hesitate to reach out for support if you need it. Your home is more than just a place to live. It's a sanctuary where memories are made and dreams are realized, so embrace the adventure. As we wrap up today's episode, let's review the key takeaways. Initial offer. Let's try to begin with a reasonable offer. This will lead to the counter offers where you can negotiate adjustments. Price negotiation, you want to consider the property condition and try to temper the emotions. Know your walkaway points. Establish limits. Then you finally get to the closing date where you coordinate based on schedules. Settling in. Establish your routines. Build community and finally personalize that space. Remember, buying a home is one of the most significant decisions you'll ever make. So take your time, do your research, and trust your instincts. Thank you for joining me today. If you found this podcast valuable, please follow, subscribe, leave a review, and share Charmaine's Real Estate Chronicles with others contemplating the exciting journey of home ownership. You can also follow me on Facebook at Charmaine Goodrich Real Estate, on Instagram at char2427e, or visit my website, charmainegoodrich.royalapage.ca. Your path to a successful home ownership is a unique chronicle, and I'm thrilled to guide you through every chapter.